Hello, it is my pleasure and privilege uh, to speak today about uh, television white spaces uh, as an enabler for rural and uti utility connectivity uh, based on CSIR's geolocation spectrum database technology. This talk uh, ref uh, refers to a paper we recently published in the SAIE What Now journal. Uh, the talk will start with background. Uh, then I uh, will describe what uh, TUI space is physically as a frequency band and then dive into the actual practice. I'll start with the background. Well, I'm Albert, Albert Lisko. I'm a principal researcher at CSIR and my co-presenter is uh, Dr. Zango Mfupe. Um, I will speak in this talk about experimental television white spaces and he will dive into the heart of TV white space that is a geolocation spectrum database, GLSD. Let's start with a bit of terminology. So TV white space stands for television white space. Uh, the term often uh, refers to spectrum band and sometimes to this type of technology. And technology typically includes components such as white space devices, which are two types in South Africa, master and client, and the GLSD, geolocation spectrum database. So why do TUI space in Africa and South Africa? Oh, because we need uh, communications uh, and uh, TUI space offers best coverage and it penetrates well through vegetation uh, and walls, uh, so it suits well our geographical conditions, which are well, demonstrated with this picture. Also, because TUI space can serve a significant portion of our population. I'll show it later. We did uh, a survey, a small short survey, um, to see the interest in TUI space as a technology. So our respondents were mostly uh, SMMEs and um, 93% of SMMEs showed significant interest in learning about UI space. And um, only 73% uh, consider themselves as uh, uh, not very knowledgeable or to medium level of understanding of UI space. Where did it start from for our research group? It started around 2009-10 with work uh, on cognitive radio, which then uh, uh, dived into the actual TUI space work with trials, uh, helping uh, ECAS with regulations, uh, working on technology, doing laboratory and field measurements, and of course working on geolocation spectrum database GLSD, which was later certified uh, and now uh, our national regulator ECAS uh, uses it uh, as a national system. Now we are working on various add-ons such as spectrum sensing network, uh, expanding GLSD. CSIR uh, done, I think, a very good job um, and has a number of firsts uh, whilst working on TUI space. Back in 2011, we organized the very first in Africa research forum on uh, cognitive radio. Uh, this was followed by um, first in the world demonstration of TUI space working successfully uh, in the channels immediately adjacent to operational TV broadcasting without causing any interference to TV broadcasting reception. Uh, US regulator FCC even refers to our results in their ruling. And I should also maybe mention uh, very important achievements. Uh, CSR GSD is the first and only African owned full operational geolocation spectrum database. TUI space is one of the many communication technologies and uh, uh, the best way to provide uh, Connectivity to people is by uh, spreading uh, different technologies and applying them in appropriate areas. So uh, some researchers in the US and recently in South Africa uh, uh, did a study and looked at how these technologies apply to uh, South Africa. The results show that up to 41% of our population can be covered using TUI space which shows that technology has a very viable business case here. Well, where does uh, 
all of this come from all these advantages. Let's look at the TUI space. So TUI space uh, refers uh, to the portion of spectrum, which is actually being borrowed from TV broadcasting. And you can see the traditional channel location from channel 21 to channel 48. And this spectrum uh, being uh, reused in the areas where it is not used by TV for communications. Well, one uh, would ask if there is a TV in, in the spectrum. Isn't it used? Well, research was done uh, a decade ago, roughly, and research uh, showed that uh, well, in South Africa and most other countries, there is plenty of spectrum available for communications, especially in rural areas. If you look at the blue uh, areas uh, uh, on the plot, uh, they uh, show the maximum availability of the spectrum. And as you can see, this, is, uh, this applies to entire South Africa, or most of it. If I try to uh, uh, present a summary of advantages and constraints, so it is a, f a frequency band from 470 to 694 megahertz, which offers a very good compromise between uh, propagation losses and uh, reasonable, not too large antenna size. The advantages include improved propagation through vegetation uh, up to eight times compared to Wi-Fi um, and several times wider area coverage than Wi-Fi, which means uh, less costs are needed uh, to implement networks on the ground. Uh, the constraints are there, but uh, as our calculations show, they are not significant. Well, <coughs> here is a direct comparison of TUI space versus Wi-Fi. Uh, you see that as the frequency is much lower, uh, this uh, offers a much better propagation through vegetation, as I mentioned eight times. Um, and uh, even though the allowed transmit power uh, is lower and antenna gain available is also lower, it doesn't matter. Um, as you can uh, see from uh, this uh, set of estimations, a TUI space band likely offers lower network costs as it needs fewer base stations to do a network rollout and to cover a large area compared to Wi-Fi. Well, now let's say the costs are lower, but can it uh, be fast enough, good enough? Uh, let's start with the basic uh, operation principle behind TUI space. So TUI space requires uh, a constant connection between uh, the base station and uh, the location spectrum database. So when uh, operation is started, the base station ask, uh, tells uh, uh, GLSD uh, that I'm in the location X, Y, uh, my parameters such and such, I'm this, uh, have this two masts, uh, um, this antenna uh, and transmit power parameters. And uh, based uh, on those inputs, GLSD responses with the list of available channels which can be used for communication. Um, GLS, uh, then the base station chooses one or several of these channels and starts doing communications with uh, user terminals, um, providing internet to the schools, clinics, uh, utilities, and so on. Well, an important aspect is uh, if the channel becomes unavailable for some reason, uh, GLSD informs base, uh, base station about this and base station uh, can switch to another channel. Um, Dr. Mfupi will talk more around this. Well, TOI space uh, has a fairly complete ecosystem including uh, lots of standards. Uh, in South Africa, two highlighted standards are the most important. Um, then uh, there is a host of uh, TOI space manufacturers uh, and here I showed the ones uh, uh, whose devices we had the opportunity to work with. Well, what is the typical pricing? Uh, base stations are around 4,000 US dollars, uh, the client devices around 500 US dollars. Uh, what it means that the cost of TOI space equipment is much lower than LTE but a bit higher than Wi-Fi. 
that comparing that one by, uh, considering that one base station can serve uh, eight to 50 uh, client devices uh, and large areas can be covered, I think it's a viable technology for uh, many applications. Well, samples of performance. Uh, we did uh, three large trials of TY space, uh, which covered uh, over 20,000 users. Um, the trials uh, had various distances. The longest link at the time was 8 kilometers, and the speeds went up to 12 megabit per second back in 2013. Equipment is better now. There are peculiarities which may need to be noted. Um, when uh, uh, operating TUI space uh, near uh, TV broadcasting channels, some, not all, some TUI space equipment uh, um, experiences a drastic reduction in throughput from being too close to a operational TV channel. But uh, this situation may only be significant in urban areas. Uh, in rural areas, there is plenty of spectrum, so it would be very rare to experience this. Well, sample speed tests. So at four kilometers uh, link in Pretoria, we managed to do 54 megabit per second. Pretty good speed. Um, a note is that the speed uh, in one direction was different to the speed in the other direction. This is because uh, one of the an uh, antennas on CSIR site uh, uh, was seen the TV broadcasting transmitter and uh, being affected by it, as I mentioned earlier. The effect is unlikely to be present in any rural or semi-rural uh, areas. Well, when it comes to propagation uh, through areas with vegetation and uh, other types of obstacles, um, here is a sample of TUI space versus Wi-Fi uh, on three kilometer link. TUI space could provide five megabit per second, uh, Wi-Fi couldn't work. Uh, more extensive tests were done and they show that TUI space uh, does pretty well. Um, for most of the situation, including when even half of the visibility is abstracted. But uh, it is not a magic bullet, so it will not work uh, when uh, the visibility is completely blocked. I would like to make an extra comment to that, uh, to say that um, this uh, good handling of uh, poor visibility uh, conditions and vegetation conditions can actually help to save uh, uh, capital expenditure installation costs for a network. As a summary, TUI space uh, is, I believe, ready for use in South Africa and it is great for rural. Uh, it is uh, well, order of magnitude better uh, than Wi-Fi for propagation through uh, vegetation, trees, uh, bush. Um, it is expected to require uh, several times less base stations and therefore costs for covering large areas. And um, it is much better in handling uh, uh, near line of sight conditions of poor visibility. Uh, the costs are between Wi-Fi and LTE, closer to Wi-Fi. Typical, typical speeds one can expect are around 20 megabit per second. Some equipment with good conditions can do well over 50 megabit per second. Well, those were the advantages. Uh, constraints is that uh, TUI space shares spectrum, and for this reason, uh, applications in urban areas need to be done with caution, uh, planning the, link, uh, the links well in advance and experimenting to ensure min minimum effect from broadcasting uh, TV transmitters. All the TUI space cannot be used for isolated point-to-point -point links because uh, connection to internet is needed. And, um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Good day. Uh, my name is Dr. Luzango Mfupe. I'm a principal researcher at CSR and Next Generation Enterprises and Institution. I'm also an adjunct professor at Nelson Mandela African Institution of Science and Technology. Today, we're going to talk about television white spaces, how to enable rural and utility connectivity with the CSR geolocation spectrum database technology. Just to give a background of the talk and motivation why we develop this technology, as we know, Spectrum is a crucial national ICT infrastructure resources and should be efficiently managed and optimally utilized. 
the fourth industrial revolution requires ubiquitous, low-cost broadband connectivity to the information superhighway for every citizen, enabling them to effectively participate in the digital economy. And according to some various research, uh, for example, the report from the World Bank, which says 10 percent penetration of bro broadband to the uh, uh, society, it can contribute up to 2.3 percentage of uh, GDP economic growth in developing countries. Okay, so I can give you a timeline of uh, television white space framework development. So we at the CSR have been involved in developing the uh, TV white space framework uh, over 10 years uh, as we speak. Uh, early research started in around uh, 2010, uh, 2012, when we engaged uh, with the ICASA, the regulator, and other stakeholders to stage the early deployment of technological trial to prove that television white space can be utilized without causing interference to the incumbent. Uh, so the journey went on in 2013, we uh, staged a trial in Cape Town. In 2014, we did another trial uh, in the rural setting that was in Limpopo area. Uh, in 2015, ICASA, the regulator, published the uh, framework uh, uh, discussion paper on how spectrum can be utilized uh, dynamically. In 2016, the CSAR, uh, we qualified our geolocation spectrum uh, technology uh, in the UK market. Uh, it was at, uh, on a call that was uh, organized by Ofcom, the regulator of UK. In 2017, uh, ICASA again, the local regulator, uh, published a position paper on dynamic and uh, opportunistic spectrum management. In 2018, uh, that's when we had the first um, draft of the television white space uh, regulation, and then it was published as the final regulation. In 2019, uh, ICASA and CSR um, entered an, an agreement to develop um, reference geolocation spectrum database for the regulator. And the, the first compliant SGLSD, which is a secondary geolocation spectrum database, was developed by the CSAR, which will be used by network operators in conjunction with the ICASA reference geolocation spectrum database. So uh, fast forward in 2020, where we are currently, uh, ICASA published the guideline uh, on how secondary geolocation spectrum database operators uh, can be qualified, and as we speak, there are a number of trials that are taking place. Uh, firstly, it was a trial on, on, on the technological uh, pre-commercial uh, observation to see if it is viable uh, economically. But again, there was also uh, a deployment of TV white space networks for combating COVID-19. And all of this, the CSR is, is uh, playing a central role because our technology is, is being used there. So we anticipate in 2021, uh, when the first commercial deployment of TV white space technology in the country will take place, and that is, according to ICASA, will be in the 1st of April. So just to give you the overview of the TV white space regulatory framework of South Africa, it's a, we can say, three or four tiered uh, framework, where at the top of it, there is a reference geolocation spectrum database, which is used by the regulator ICASA. Then on the second layer, you have the secondary geolocation spectrum databases that will be operated by commercial entities and the organizations to provide uh, spectrum to the network operators on the third layer and devices and end users sitting at the bottom layer. So what, what is this technology, the, te the television white space uh, uh, technology that we're talking about at the CSR? So we at the CSR, what we have developed is a system called uh, Geolocation-Based Dynamic Spectrum Allocation, or GLDSA technology. So uh, to give you a nutshell on this, uh, the CSR have developed a cloud-hosted uh, system. Uh, this is a technology which is used to address the lack of affordable broadband connectivity, and the typical use cases are the following. Uh, so the first use case is to enable the national ICT regulator, like uh, ICASA, the Independent uh, Communication Authority Regulator, uh, to automatically account 
for usage and allocation of spectrum in real time throughout their respective geographical area of authority. Then we also, uh, in our platform, we enable communication network planners. So we have a network planning tool which dynamically um, allow planning and creation of opportunistic communication networks and related models of operation that uh, support low cost of access uh, to the spectrum and thereby uh, uh, provide affordable connectivity, especially in the rural areas. And the third use cases among many uh, which our technology can enable is uh, wireless network operators. So one of our, our, of our technology in this uh, platform can allow dynamic access and sharing of uh, low-cost spectrum and automatically reconfiguration of network devices parameters and when uh, free spectrum is available. So it is a dynamic uh, access nature of spectrum that allows uh, opportunistic type of networks. Uh, so we have developed an algorithm that um, model the technical parameters of incumbent network uh, that are deployed by various actors, uh, for example, Centec uh, and other broadcasters. So we reuse the same spectrum using our approach to check uh, whether that spectrum can be used. So our, our approach or our algorithm is called career uh, to noise plus interference ratio approach whereby we check uh, different power levels at different location and see if that uh, particular area and time uh, we can find uh, available spectrum that can be reused or be shared by TV white space networks. To give you uh, a deeper overview of the technology that we've developed, uh, so talking about the regulatory uh, geolocation spectrum database, as I highlighted earlier, this is a technology that we've developed to be used by national regulators. For example, in this case, ICASA, the, the regulator of uh, South Africa. So this technology we have developed for ICASA specifically, it allows ICASA to manage the national resources uh, and in, uh, in the context of TV wide space uh, regulatory framework, uh, the regulatory geolocation spectrum database uh, manage the secondary geolocation spectrum databases uh, to see if they are compliant to the TVY space regulations of 2018. So each time the regulator want to see uh, or to check or verify the accuracy of the secondary databases, they use this tool that we have developed uh, to do so. Our uh, second um, technology within the GLDSA uh, platform is called secondary geolocation uh, spectrum database or we call it spectrum switch. So this uh, spectrum switch, uh, we have developed it so that uh, a network operator can connect their network devices through it and access spectrum. So it, this is the uh, central tool in the network management of uh, any dynamic uh, type of networks, like TV white spaces ones, whereby every time where there is a, a available spectrum, the tool will tell the network devices run by network operators uh, that this is spectrum uh, you can use at which power levels, also management of network devices, as well as checking their compliance to the type approval process that is uh, administered by the regulator. So a third uh, tool uh, within our GLDSA platform is called Dynamic Network Planning Tool. Uh, so this tool enables uh, planners of networks to take um, advantage of our GLDSA platform uh, with its embedded uh, regulatory functions and all the model that we've built to dynamically check where a network can be planned and placed. So uh, given the nature of the technology that we are dealing with, which is dynamic uh, access of spectrum, you need a tool that understand the local environment. When I say environment, I mean the re uh, underlying regulatory functions that uh, govern this area of spectrum. So here we're talking about television white space. This is the uh, same spectrum that, that is used by broadcasters. So our planning tool takes into consideration of all the underlying regulations to dynamically uh, allow the network planner to plan 
uh, a network, which is uh, a competitive advantage compared to other planning tools in the market. Uh, so here, uh, I'll just give you an overview of how the entire uh, ecosystem works. You have the RGLSD on top, you have the SGLSD, then you have networks uh, that serve rural areas for applications like farming, uh, smart farming, uh, smart schools, e-health, and so forth. So the, our technology has been used uh, uh, and is currently used globally. As you can see, we have a global footprint in Cyprus, uh, in Tanzania, in Ghana, in Botswana, and in the UK as well. Our technology uh, is being used by different partners that have entered agreement with us, either for research or commercial purposes. So we have developed a number of patents. As you can see, we have num a, a patent in UK, in South Africa, in Aripo country, in Nigeria, uh, in uh, countries, uh, French speaking countries as well. Uh, this is the value chain of the technology where you see different actors, uh, including manufacturers, uh, value added service providers, network planners, network operators, internet data centers, and end users. Potential applications, as you can see, uh, smart village agriculture, vehicle technology, telemedicine, e-education, and so forth. These are the available uh, opportunities at the CCR, uh, whereby we, we invite you to come and license our technology or co-develop applications and other use cases. Thank you very much.